We are looking at an island cherry or Catalina cherry, Prunus alicifolia, subspecies Lyonii, or sometimes just treated as Prunus Lyonii in some botany books. It isn't technically an island endemic, however, because you can find this species on Baja. Uh, but most of the plants that you're going to find like this uh, in this species are going to be on the Channel Islands. In fact, it grows here on Santa Cruz Island, Santa Rosa, West Anacapa, San Clemente, and Catalina. In the horticulture trade where this is really popular, it's often just called Catalina cherry. And as a matter of fact, on the mainland, it spreads like crazy uh, in natural areas. So it's actually an invasive plant when people take it back to the mainland and plant it there. It's a pretty neat tree, though. Uh, here on the islands, you'll find it anywhere from something that's shrub-sized or something as big as this, or even bigger, up to about uh, 24 feet or so. Um, it is an edible cherry, but it's mostly pit. So if you were to come along to this plant in the fall, when it's covered in beautiful looking cherries and eat the cherries, uh, you'd have to eat a lot of them in order to get a good cherry fix, uh, as I like to put it. And I have eaten a lot of them. They are quite uh, tasty, but it's mostly just pit. There's just a little tiny bit of sweet meat around it. The Chumash people really like the pit. That to them was the most important part of the plant, but you wouldn't want to eat it raw because uh, it's basically got a cyanide count compound in it. You need to uh, carefully leach it. Uh, the, the work that the Chumash went through was amazing to make the pit of this plant edible, but they really relied on it. It was a major food source um, on, the, on the mainland and on the islands. This is the uh, leaf on the island cherry. One of the interesting things about this particular wild cherry is that it has more or less flat leaves that are not toothed. They don't have spines on them. Right across the channel on the mainland, the plants that you'll see there, we call the holly-leaved cherry uh, for obvious reasons, because the leaves do have a holly-like appearance. They're very spiny. Whereas the ones in the islands almost never do. They're usually um, unarmed, if you can call it that. Uh, they don't have those spines. Uh, but I said almost always, once in a while you will find a holly-leaved uh, uh, variety out here. Uh, a particular plant that may have a couple of leaves on it that, have, that are spiny, or plants that are, by and large are very spiny. So it's interesting, you can get a feel for the fact that they are pretty closely related to our holly-leaved cherry in, uh, on the mainland. But um, normally they have a very different shaped leaf. The other thing is, is that the leaves are much larger on the one on the island that compared to the one on the mainland. Again, though, this particular subspecies is found on Baja as well, so it is not, strictly speaking, an island endemic. Here's some fresh flowers on the island cherry. Seems like all of these plants have every, everything from uh, flower buds to fresh flowers to dried out flowers, and uh, here and there some uh, fruit just getting started on them here in early May. We're uh, looking at the immature fruit on the island cherry here, so just the beginning cherries. Again, this plant has everything from flower buds to uh, dried up flowers and also um, actual cherries getting started. Give these a uh, couple more months and they'll be uh, look very similar to what you'd buy in the store for um, in a cherry.